What's going on, man? It's your girl, Tampa Mystic, and... It's your boy, Doe Rilla. Hey, we live and direct on the Industry's Most Wanted... Podcast. Let's get now, it. Now, you got to give it to me better than that. Apparently, I was trying to be cool. <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> man, listen, I got somebody here sitting next to me today, sitting next to us today, that I got so much love and respect for in this music business. Um, known him for a long time. He's been doing this for a long time, and I just really, you know, the world got to know what Bez Got Talent got going on, man. Introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Bez. Uh, they know me as Bez Knows Talent. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with y'all. That shit was so lame to me six years ago. <laughs> One of my men was like, yo, your name should be Bez Knows Talent. <laughs> so, nigga, that shit lame. No, he got talent. He, You know talent, but you got talent, too, yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, I go by Bez. I've uh, been marketing in the game for about 13 years now. And, and blessed to still have a, a job. Yeah. Man. And, you, and feed my family. There we go. Listen, so we're just going to, we're going to dig a little bit today. Is that cool? That's cool. I want people to know your journey because you've been doing this a long time. Anytime that you've been doing this for more than a decade, I feel like you're seasoned in this business. That's what my OG, Bigger Rankin, said. He said it takes at least 10 years to really be seasoned in this business because there's so much to learn. So yeah. um, where are you from originally? Uh, I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I was raised in the DMV area. I started out as a young kid playing basketball, so I got recruited down in that area. I think it was like eighth grade. How did how did that how did that like pave the way for you to want to do music, if at all? Okay, so um, <laughs> when I was in the DMV area, my mother she is uh, close to Drew Hill. Okay. You know, close to Mark uh, Cisco, and I used to go to the studio all the time. That thong, 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 thong. <laughs> so <laughs> it kind of, it kind of gave me. It, to be honest with you, music was kind of like my first love. Okay. You know, seeing him in the studio, seeing all of them. Um, Man, that Woody, that had to be legendary. I'm sorry. No, it definitely <laughs> was. You know, it was. Uh, what he's singing to me and shit, and yeah, just you know, um, watching them in the studio, how their workflow goes. And then just seeing the cars that they had, the girls that they had, just their lifestyle. I might have been, what, 11, 12 years old at the time. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, just being around that atmosphere for like about a year or two, it was kind of dope. Then, you know, I went to high school, played basketball. Uh, from from there, went to college, uh, D1 up in New York. Um, and during the summertime, I would have an um, uh, internship at a record label. Okay. And that kind of, you know, got me into the marketing part. But I always loved the music part to the point that I thought I wanted to be a rapper. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, then, and I learned very quickly that the coach outlasts the rapper. Yeah. You feel Man. Me? So. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Because the as in the business, you can do it forever. You don't want to still be sixty years old or having to go on tour and stuff oh, like man. that. Oh man, and a lot of them do because they need that bread. So. Right. Right. I get it. So before music, though, did you aspire to be a basketball player? Most definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, went overseas for a year, got hurt, hurt my knee, um, came back to the States. And as I was, you know, uh, recovering from that, um, I, I went to the internship again at the label. Yeah. And the label so happened to be Def Jam. It was yeah. the same label I've been working for for a minute, but yeah. um, I just didn't know how big it was back then when I was working for when I was in college. Right. You know, absolutely, because it was it was it probably was just like oh you know this is something I'm doing. You didn't really realize the magnitude of not at all being around the people at Def Jam. Definitely you know what I'm not. like? That's that's huge. Like. I, man, I wish I could go back and have interned at a label like that in my younger years, man. Like, that's a blessing right there. Um, well, the internship was coffee and donuts. But yeah. you still got to be around. Everybody. The, it was the, great. Yeah. Loved it. I was the goofball around there. So I would have did the coffee and donuts just to be around some of the greats. <laughs> yeah. No, um, fly on the wall. Learned a lot. Yeah. You know? um, but yeah. So, with that being said, um, you know, being an intern at Def Jam, what did that lead to next for you? Um, my wife was down, well, my girl at the time, which is my wife now, was down here at Emory University. And uh, I relocated down here and worked with a lot of, um, you know, artists, you know what I'm saying? I worked with uh, marketing-wise yeah. and helping out, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I had a real close friend, his name was Excel. Um, he worked with Gucci, Shorty Lowe, and everybody. And at the time, I was actually hanging around uh, MMI and Roscoe Dash. And yeah. That. So he was telling me, he was like, <laughs> man, you need to hang around the Real Atlanta, which I have no clue what the Real Atlanta is. And I'm a, and I'm a New York dude. <laughs> with, like, what is the Real Atlanta? Yeah, I'm like, I'm in Atlanta. <laughs> like, nah, nigga, you in Norcross. 
So it's like, <laughs> so, <sighs> so you know, he had, and he was a cameraman at the time. So yeah. he did like, you know, Gucci stuff, Shorty Low and everybody. And um, he was like, man, you need to come hang around, you know, us. So off Camelton Road, uh, I think D4, D4L had a house off Camelton Road. And it was like 20 cars out front of it, Bentleys and all types of stuff. And that's where they recorded that. So he just had me hanging around them. Um, I, I went on a couple of little tours and, yeah. you know, not really tours, but shows, you know, with them. I just got to hang around them and just see how Atlanta was. Yeah. What I did not understand, though, and, and, and what was that, D4? What was it D4L? What's was Laffy Taffy, D4L. Right? Yes. Yeah, so it was D4L. So what I did not like was I was the New York dude, so my accent was real strong. <laughs> yeah. So you know how they are. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm talking all fast. And at the time, I wanted to be a rapper. Yeah. So, dude, let me be a rapper. It was Shorty Lowe's. It was Front Street. Front Street. Shout out to my dog, Front Street. Yeah, Front Street. <laughs> uh, he was like, look, man, you could come in here at 7 in the morning. So, I looked at him like, 7 in the morning? But everybody, <laughs> all the cool people out here at night, like, why well, I got to come at 7 in the morning? <laughs> so, one of the dudes from D4L come out, and, I mean, he just put it on me. He was just like, bro, he was like, man, you got to earn your keep around here. You just taking, you know, you coming from New York, think you just going to do this, this, that, and the third. He was like, man, you from New York. You probably think Laffy Taffy like some bullshit, don't you? You know how many ringtones we done sold and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like you know, but, you know, as I got to, you know, be around them and understand their yeah. grind and everything and where they come from, I, I, I learned to respect it. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But from there, just me being around there, uh, you know, uh, oh, he also told me that day I need to be an asset. Mm. He said, "Just don't be around here trying to be a rapper and be a groupie ass nigga. You need to be an asset, right? Not a liability. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> he was like, you just be hanging. So you know, uh, I learned real quick around them, and it was yeah. dope. You feel me? So from there, um, that was like shoot, 2012, 2013. From there, um, I opened up my own company called 1133 Group, which yeah. is uh, I'm half owner uh, with my guy Push. She's been in the industry for a minute too, and then I also uh, opened up Bad Nose Talent." And basically what I did was just market, market for everybody. Yeah. You know, I had contracts through Universal all the way up until 2016. Yeah. Um, I still have them now, but I, I like to work for myself so I can work for every label. Of course. And yeah. not just, yeah, just be held to them. Um, so, you know, um, from there, I'm here, you know, uh, <laughs> marketing, you know, um, and, and, and helping a lot of independent artists out and keeping major artists signed still. Yeah. yeah. You do a lot. And that that's why I, I wanted um, The Messenger. He's an artist that I've known for a long time to, to stick around and hang out to see what you do because that's what you do. You help independent artists. You put them in, in good positions yeah. and you help them with their marketing, which, as we know, and, and Doral yeah. as well, not only is he my co-host and producer engineer, but he's an artist himself. And yeah. one of the biggest things that you have to do in this business is you got to have marketing and promo. Definitely. Yeah. Without that, you, you, you ain't got nothing, really. Not at all. Because who's going to hear your music? Thanks. So your mom, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right? And mom Duke's gonna be like, "Baby, that sounds so good," or "Baby, I ain't feeling that." But other than that, so yeah. um, let's let's talk about you know the artists that you work with. You know, how does that how does that relationship come about? Do they come to you? Do you see what they're doing? You say, "Man, I want to work with them." Like, how does the artists that are working with Biz be, become to work with Biz? God has blessed me, so. I get to choose who I want to work with and don't want to work with. Yeah. It's a blessing. I Hallelujah. To, I don't have to just pay my electricity bill and just take anybody and everybody. Man. Yeah. Um, who you telling? And first and foremost, you know, when I when I do work with artists, it's very important that they understand the business. Yeah. yeah. You know? You know, a lot of people out here really quick to take their money, do their job, um, put them on a blog or do whatever, and they're not even ready. You know? That's right. So first and foremost, I would want to get the artists ready. Um, a lot of artists, you know, hit me up through my DMs. Um, I travel a lot. You know, I do a lot of shows, you know, um, in different states, especially in the South. A lot of people come up to me, ask me if they could work with me and everything like that. So I kind of, I, I bait them, but I also, you know, try to um, see where they are in, in their artistry. If yeah. they're even ready for this type of, like, marketing. Right. Yeah. Because right. cause between me and you, I feel like, and I'm not trying to boast, but I'm going to be honest. I think I'm one of the few that can do the unrealistic. 
if yeah. that makes sense. No, I agree. Yeah. I absolutely agree. Like and, for real, for real. And that's why I wanted the people who are <clears throat> tuned in to understand where they need to be and how how do they get the opportunity to work with you. Yeah. Because what you do is not going to help them if they don't have their business together. Most definitely. And then they're going to come, come back and be like, it didn't work. Well, no, it's because your business isn't together. Most you know definitely. what I'm saying? So they have to be at a certain level before what Bez does is really going to make that major impact on them. Yeah. So yeah. with that being said, if you have an artist that comes to you and they got great music, but their business isn't together, is that something that you help them with as well? Definitely. If okay. I believe in them. Yeah. yeah. If I believe in they them. They got man. a good grind. You know, they, they're ready to work. and yeah. Then I'm, I'm all for it. I help them with their business. And that's everything from a, an accountant to a lawyer to a manager. You know, just just getting their foundation right. If I really feel like they talent can really go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Because another thing that I'm blessed with is uh, I go to New York. You know, I go to New York a lot. Right. And I go to Rock Nation, Def Jam, Republic, uh, Epic, Atlantic. And when I go, and I've been up there so much every year that it's like, you know, who does Baz got for me now type, <laughs> type shit. They know you're going to bring somebody fire. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like, and that's a cool thing. But after the fireness and the good music, it's like, all right, bet. Are they a liability? Yeah, you feel me? Who's gonna? Who's gonna? When I give them this money and and uh, and I'm trusting y'all to go back to Atlanta to do what y'all need to do, is it gonna hit their head? Are they gonna go out here splurging? Are they gonna stick to the business? Who's their team? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So like nowadays, when I go to New York, I make sure that you know all that is handled. You know what I'm saying before we even go up there, because at the end of the day, your talent is good. Yeah, that's cool. They don't pay the bills though. It's the yeah. business that do. That's facts. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I think that I love that we're having this conversation because, you know, a lot of artists that may tune in, they need to hear that. They yeah. need to be an asset and not a liability because a yes. lot of them are. They get that that money from the label and they go blow it. And then what? It's like, bro, that you got to pay that back. <laughs> Man, listen, I have so many artists that come into my office that are known, you know, um, and they're ignorant to the business. Yeah. That's so, facts. So I get paid two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for an advance, right? That's just my money, right? Dude, I would have put my single on radio rotation. I would have put a lot of money into Spotify, make sure that I'm on those playlists. Yes. I would have I would have charted my record on Billboard, however the heck that happens. You right. Feel me? Yeah. But I would at least put some money into myself. And that's what they want to see you do. They want to see you yeah. put money into yourself. Because once that money's out, then I mean, that's like you going to an investor after he gave you a hundred bands. And asking them for another 50. Right, exactly. Yeah. He'd be so like, wait, you haven't paid me back the first 100. Exactly. And you ain't even do nothing with the first 100. <laughs> right. But I like the Rolex on your wrist, though. It should look good, though. <laughs> Is that a bust down? Okay. <laughs> I like that. You feel yeah. me? So, yeah. So any any independent artist that's out here, right, and they're getting started in the business, and obviously we're not going to give them too much because that's what they got to come pay you for is your your knowledge and your consulting and stuff like that. For this. You know, so but <laughs> what would be a, a piece of advice or a, a tip that you would give any aspiring artist out here, you know, that's that's looking to do this that doesn't necessarily know the business? Pick up a book, read. I had to do that. My wife, right? So I wanted to be in the business so much, and I'm around everybody. So I'd be coming home late every night back yeah. in the day. And my wife was like, man, we got bills we got to pay. We got stuff we got to do. Yeah. And do like, and her best friend, I'll never forget this. He was like, your man always at the studio, but where the hit record? Where's the records? <laughs> yeah. You feel me? And I was like, dang. like So for my birthday, you know, I wanted to get a car. Like a dummy. It was a Dodge Challenge I wanted to get when it first came out. My wife got me a book. And it was basically all you need to know about the music industry. Ooh, that's powerful. Yeah. So, um, and you know, dudes, I don't read, man. <laughs> I, I, I was, I was on my ignorant stuff, but <laughs> I said if I really want to take this serious, you know, then I'm gonna have to read and I'm gonna have yeah. to gain some knowledge and actually understand, you know, what what the music game really is. Yes. So it was about management, and that's one thing I don't want to do. I hate managing artists. Man. Yeah. But I read. <laughs> that's I read, a full time job. No, it really is though. <laughs> and, and I and I read it. And I and I understood about the managing. Um, I understood about marketing. I understand about publishing. You know, so with all of that being said, and then actually me going through experiences for myself with the artists that I had, it, it taught me a heck of a lot. Yeah. So like all the failures that you know on the outside looking in, that somebody would be like, "Dang man, he failed a lot," or he didn't make it a lot. Me personally, I, I look at them as lessons. Of course. Yeah. 
everybody is going to have failures in life. Like, you know, they talk about, like, you know, I know a lot of people aren't a Donald Trump fan, but you can't take a fact away. I like fact. Donald. I, I do, too. I think he's a phenomenal. Be honest. I think he's a phenomenal businessman. Definitely. He did way more for us than our current president. I'm just going to say that Definitely, straight yeah. like that, you Same know. Um, but, you know, they talk about how he, he did. He filed bankruptcy like several times. But he's a multi-billionaire and became the president of our United States. So don't look at someone because they failed a few times as if they're a failure. Like you said, it's a lesson Most learned. Definitely. Another thing is you got to know how to play the game. Donald Trump knows how to play the game. Yeah, he yeah. does. He's he's a he's a phenomenal businessman, period. Yeah. And that's, I, in my opinion, that's what this country needed. We ain't going to get too much off on a tangent. Yeah. But <laughs> I was just using that as an example that, um, you know, like you said, you know, every artist you work with, maybe they may not make it, but that's not – your fault. You can't make people resonate with somebody. I don't care how much money they got. Either they're going to like them or they're not. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. And and that's <laughs> and that's the biggest thing. It's like when you t – okay, so if you look in Atlanta, you look at all the, the CEOs or the, or the people who's helping artists or trying to do something for artists, they either love or they hate it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. There's me. no in between. There isn't. And I had to learn that too. You know what I'm saying? Like – I swear on everything. Like, if y'all look me up, I could take an artist from zero to 100. I've done it a lot, you know? Yeah. But the thing is, is that I can't make somebody love your music. Yeah. I can't make you somebody. Look, music could be great, and then I take you to Shade 45 in New York, and your personality is whack. That right there just, just created a big stigma for you. Period. You feel me? Right. So I'm not Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> I'm, I'm best <laughs> that, that knows how to market and put you in places <laughs> As an independent artist that that the majors are in. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, at the end of the day, it's about how many eyes are on you, you know? Yeah. And I tell everybody, you know, that I market for, like, people hate to spend money, man. And I used to hate to spend money, too. I did. And when I realized that I spent money on myself and I invested in myself and I believe in myself, dog, it's been, it's been, it's been up ever since. Yes. 2018 has been up ever since. Yes, Thanks. you have to because if you if you're a business and a brand, you got to invest in yourself. Most you're definitely. never ever going to get any further than where you're at. You got to take risk. Oh man, but everybody in the risk taker. I'm no, a big risk taker. I am too. You know I'm what I'm saying? I am too. Yeah, and God's always going to look out when we do when you Most when definitely. you have the right intentions in line. And exactly, your heart got to be pure. Yes. So at the end of the day, I ain't going to lie. You know, everybody make mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes. Of course. Growing up. But I know now I can sleep at night. I do the right thing, you know. Yeah. So my heart is usually always pure and risk taking, man. Jesus Christ, man! Like, <laughs> listen, like if you, especially when you are entrepreneur, yes. Yeah. Like if you don't take risks, man, then go get a nine to five, man. No, nah, for real. Yeah. Listen, I, and I love that we're having this conversation because that's so where I'm at at this point in my life right now. It's like yeah. I'm just taking these risks and it's going to pay off, you Most know. Definitely. Um, Bez and I, we got history, man. We've done a lot of work together. We've done events together. We've done listening parties together. Yeah. We've done a lot of work together. Um, who are some of the artists, that, if you're able to to name them, that you're working with right now? Um. Hmm. Independent wise, a uh, girl named Nisi J. Okay. She, she's pretty dope. She's from the DMV area. Um, who else do I work with? Jesus Christ. I work with a lot of independent artists. Uh, Ganja Man. From yeah. Alabama? Yeah. Shout out to my dog, Ganja yeah. Man. Ganja Man. He's, he, he's fine. He's dope, man. He is. He got a good personality. He's got a person. great personality. I interviewed him, I think, last year sometime. Okay, okay. So, yeah, Ganja. Um, who else? Uh, Raindrop. She's from Shout Ohio. out to Raindrop. Yeah, she works with Mama's Management, yeah. too. Yep. Uh -huh. She's on the rise, for yeah. sure. Raindrop. Um, Johnny Blaze. Okay. Um, yeah, she's independent. As far as major, um, I do a lot of shows, too. So, in the past year, Moneybag Yo, um, Young Thug. Um, right now, I'm actually uh, teamed up with Linux ENT to do uh, Slime Life Shorty. Oh, dope. Okay. Slime a little dirt. Um, and he's about to do an A City tour. Um, and then me personally, you know, I started managing actually producers and writers. I got smart. Oh, so you said I ain't managing the artists, no. but I'll manage the producers and the writers. No. I got you. That's what I need to no. tap in the writer part. Hey man, listen. Man. Yeah, like yeah, cause yeah, yeah talk, actually talk to him about yeah. that. What I pick his brain a little how, bit. <laughs> how do you get into the writing part for other artists? For other artists, you just gotta just. Uh, I mean, it's really about who you know. Yeah. To be honest, and I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. The writers is is 
they need a union, man. I feel yeah. like, you know, because the writers are, are the, the hardest to get paid for real. Yeah. You know, it's the producers that really, you know, got the get the leeway. Then it's the label. Then the managers. The writers really have, like, the last. So let's say that me and you were go write for uh, LMA or somebody like that, right? Yeah. And the producers in there. Producers are going to get his 50%. You feel me? Yeah. The producer, they want that beat. Nine times out of ten, they're going to pay him an upfront free, uh, up, upfront fee. Uh, the writer though, well, I could <laughs> yeah. pay you or I can't pay you. You know, the most I seen a writer get paid two fifty. Oh boy! And you gotta think about it. You're the one that's really putting the swag on the beat. You're the yeah. one that's arranging. You're the yeah. one that's doing everything. So it's like not a not a back end money is excellent as long as you have a manager that can work out that percentage for you on the publishing yeah. side. Exactly. Yeah. The yeah. back end is good. That quarterly is excellent. Since I've been in the publishing game, man, my life has changed tenfold. Yeah, you feel me. But in the long run, though, you know, it's not it's not yeah. short money. You got to wait for a minute. Yeah. So, so would you, it, it be safe to say if if you want to get into writing for other people in the beginning stages, you need to make sure you got something else going on as well. Most definitely. Most Until that definitely. money start coming in, and, I mean, definitely. you always got to have multiple hustles anyway. You do. Yeah. You do. You do. You do. But I, like I was saying, you know, uh, I manage um, Kenny Barto. He used to be with Justice League. Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. I managed Kenny. I managed Kane Precise, the love child, as he likes to call himself. He signed <laughs> with BMG. Um, about to sign another uh, uh, artist deal. Um, I managed a uh, writer named Nate. He's excellent. He had two number ones last year. So um, with Lil Wayne and DJ Khaled and Ranello. I managed him. Uh, he signed to Sony. Uh, wrote for a lot of people: Cardi B, um, Erica Banks. Um, who do I start manage? That's about it right now. And if I manage somebody else, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's a busy guy. Yeah. Bez stays on the move. Um, let let's let's kill this whole stigma about ghost writers because I, I I really it irritates my soul when people downplay that. Right? People yeah. be like, oh, he got a ghost writer. So what? Everybody like, got a ghost writer. Yeah. Man, so let's let can, can we please dive into that a little bit more? Like, you know, I think it, probably every big artist out there has had somebody write for them, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna say it like this, and and I got um, exposed to this because I dag on. I'm not gonna say no names, but the biggest artist in the game has writers, and it kind of like made me lose respect for them for that night. Yeah. But after that, I was like, dog, these people be so busy, man. Yeah. yeah. They don't got time to sit up, man. They got one, somebody going to Jimmy Kimmel. I did Jimmy Kimmel. We're going to Breakfast Club. I did a Breakfast Club. We got a concert over here. When they got time to write. And I'm talking about, like, really put their thoughts down yeah. and write something that's worth writing for the fans to really gravitate to. Yeah. So, you know, at the end of the day, man, I don't really call it Ghost Riders no more. I really call it a team. It's a whole team. Yes, yeah. exactly. That's why I wanted to kill that analogy yeah. because. Yeah, nah. This ain't the 90s. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm so glad that you, you we did it that right here today. You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah. you know, I mean, it's it's teamwork with anything we do. We cannot advance without having people helping us. Most definitely. We cannot do this ourselves, you know? Like, I, I'm trying to grow my team even more just because, like, there's so much that we could be doing more yeah. if we had more people involved. Most definitely. Only so many hours in a day. Right. So so let's talk about your average day. You know, I know that you you do so much, but like Bez wakes up in the morning. Take us to your day. <laughs> you uh, drink coffee in the morning. I do. I'm a Starbucks shawty. <laughs> Hell yeah. They know me at Starbucks. Real talk. If I'm an hour, I swear to God, if I'm an hour, 45 or 30 minutes late to Starbucks, the lady in the window is like, I see you running late today. <laughs> she- <Yeah>. No bullshit. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I wake up in the morning. You know, I have a 13-year-old child. Um I'm I'm doing the fatherhood thing. I didn't know I I didn't know being a, a father was so hard. Yeah. So um, I'm 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 raising my baby. Especially now that you're a teenager. Jesus Christ! <laughs> yes. Uh, she she's a straight A student. Yeah. Oh, know? that's a blessing. Um, but you know where I come from, you know you had to have you know it's different these days. Yeah. You know you had that street smarts. You had to worry about people picking on you. Yeah. And all yes. This. My daughter go to school looking like Billie Eilish, and she's the coolest kid. There. I love I that. Don't understand it. It's, yeah. just, it's so weird to me. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> but it's it's I'm old now, so I get it. Um, but a normal day for me when I get up, I pray. You know, thank God that. Um, I, I open up my eyes. That's the first and, thing we got to do. Yeah. That's the first thing we got to do Most every definitely. day. I get up, I pray. And then usually my wife is 
up before me, and I get up at 7.30, 7 o'clock. Oh, she be getting up early, early. She wants to get it to it. She wants to go work out. She wants to do all this. But I thank God that, um, you know, he allowed us to wake up every morning together to where 10 years ago or 8 years ago, she was waking up 5.30 in the morning getting in traffic to go to work. Yeah. You feel me? So so that's a blessing within itself. Um, Of course, you know, take a shower, brush my teeth. Um... And usually I'm on I'm on my way to the to the office, man. I get to the office probably like around ten ten thirty. Okay. You know? Yeah. Um, from there, um, probably have two or three meetings. I leave by like three three thirty. Uh, every Tuesday, I'm on a, a podcast as well off B100. Yeah, podcast. Well, I want to talk about that in a minute as well. Yeah, with uh, Et and Prince. Um, so uh, Tuesdays, you know, I go I go there by six, leave by eight. Um, and after that, I usually just go home. I do a lot of work. I have a home office as well. Yeah, so got to have that. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I do a lot of work um, from the home office, especially with the marketing. Um, every week I have, you know, team uh, build-up meetings. I have seven people that work with me. I never say somebody works for me. That's right. So we all work together. As which a is, team, yep. Exactly, because I wouldn't be the man that I am today without them. That's 110%. Yeah. Man. That's, that's, I used to be like, me, me, me. Nah, it ain't me. Yes. You feel me? So, um, but we have team meetings, you know, uh, once a week. Um, and I don't know if you noticed, just real quick. You called me today, right? Uh-huh. What what happened? It it, it said that it couldn't go through couldn't or something. Couldn't go through. Ain't that about it? Because <laughs> my phone is on do not disturb. Because if it was on, it would have. I would literally have two to three. I keep my, both of mine when I'm not here on D&D. Yeah. We on D&D real time. For real though. Because I can't be on the phone all day, every day. Period. I my phone is yeah. off. The t- like right now, it's off. Like I turned it off. Yeah. So it can't, you know. Because I had it focus. off. Yeah. yeah. So it's, you know. But. Um, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm a D&D queen. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a D&D king. So. <laughs> I put, um, and then, you know, I got an assistant as well that helps me out a heck of a lot. That's another thing that I learned too, man. You can't do everything yourself. Man, yeah. I need a good assistant. Is there anybody out too. there? Come man, on. Man, listen, I done went through 20 of them. That, so that's, good luck. that's the problem. Good luck. That is the oh, Jesus Christ. problem. I've had people who claim to be my assistant, and it just, yeah, that's a whole nother story. Yeah. But go ahead. No, I get it. <laughs> Trust me, I get it. I done had, I done had a lot. All different type of problems. Starstruck, lazy, don't want to work. Right. One thing you, that you got to understand, man, you have to put in the work. Yes. And that, and that shit Thanks. might sound cliche, man, but, bro, everything that I'm doing to this day or all the success that you might see, you know, on the internet or hear about me or whatever, is has been planned for years, bro. Yeah. Like, I really planned this out and I really worked at it. Nights that I didn't sleep. Nights that I'm mapping this out. This is a, a orchestrated... um. Uh, map out plan that's you know, right that I'm doing or that my team did like this is this definitely didn't happen overnight you have to have a blueprint you know definitely you got to like with anything we do any business plan you got to like plan it out because we can't just be out here winging it with business nah Thanks. nah that's a good way to go back to work at Starbucks or Burger King <laughs> No offense to y'all doing that. No, nah, but it's true. But, you know, some people, we, we had this conversation um, with the messenger. Some people mm-hmm. are comfortable with just getting by. That's yeah. not us. We're a bunch of hustlers in this room. Like, we aspire. We, we're grateful for what we have right yeah, now. Most definitely. But we aspire to have more than that. Most definitely. Period. Um. So, 2022, man, what what does Bez have in store for us that you don't mind sharing or that you can share? You know, maybe anything new that you're innovating into what you already got going on or what you got? Um, All right. I got a couple of things. So, you know, uh, we started a podcast last year. Yep. And we maybe did like six or seven shows. Um, then I kind of chilled from that for a second because I wanted to be all the way organized. Right. Um. And we came, we came back the first of January, and I think we done did about five of them so far. It's been That's really great. good. Um, numbers are going up, and, and it's been fun for me. You know, I'm not the radio guy. I'm yeah. usually I'm the shy guy. I'm not the guy that's supposed to be like all in, in the mic and want to talk. But I'm starting to get used to it. Yeah, I, you you doing you you were doing amazing. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, I'm getting used to it. You know, not stuttering a lot. I'm trying not to cuss, but I know I cuss a little bit. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but, but I used it, I used that platform for, to market myself a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I part ET Cali on it with me. Um, 
which he's very well known he's out the, here. Yeah, he's the radio guy. Yeah. So. You know, um, me just learning from him and just, you know, how to maneuver and everything. Yeah. And then I got Prince Howard. Um, he's a publishing guru. He has a lot of uh, big publishing um, deals that have gone through in the last three years. That's yeah. helped a lot of, you know. It's amazing. Independent artists and major artists out. Um, but us three, we have a show. It's called The Incredibles. It's on B100. And uh, it's dope, man. Um, I've been bringing a lot of, you know, everybody is about, you know, the network. So I've been bringing yeah. a lot of people that I know. Uh, on you know, uh, to get interviewed, and it's been real dope and good information. Dope. So that's one thing that I'm doing. Uh, the second thing is, me and my business partner came up with something called Meta Music Group. Okay. So everybody's talking about this metaverse. Metaverse, right? Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> I don't know about an NFT. I don't know about a metaverse. I don't know about none of that. Bro, I'm a still trying ago. to catch up too. <laughs> yeah. So I've been studying it for like the last month just to see like what it really is. And right. What's the big deal. Mm-hmm. Um. My homeboy, which is Future's uh, first cousin, came to me, know him for years, and he was like, man, we should uh, come up with a label. But I was like, I just don't want just any type of label. So yeah. we got to do something that sounds like futuristic. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. So he came up with the name. He was like, how about Meta Music Group? Mm. I said, that sounds dope. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you could do both, you know, because it's all about, you know, the art world. It's about, you know, the music, the publishing, yeah. the marketing, everything that we do. Um, and just do it a little bit different, too. Um, bring like a new wave because like the 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 labels these days, I, <clears throat> I'm so fifty fifty with them, man. You know, I, I want to be fair to the artists. Of course, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Like I feel like artists aren't getting well. Uh, let me take that back. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a hundred. <clears throat> when it comes to business, it's not my job to teach you business when we doing yeah. business, right? So I can't. You can't get mad at me when I up to when right. we go to business. It's like war. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you feel me? No disrespect, and it is what it is, and I I got to get mine. Nah, for real. Yes. But at the same token, having that same type of attitude and energy, in the long run, it doesn't really work out. Look at all our greats: Suge Knight, Irv Gotti, yeah, yeah, Dame Dash. It never really worked out when we had that mentality. You yeah. feel me? So I kind of want to switch the wave a little bit to where you know the artist at least understands, because the lack of knowledge is you know somebody see a dollar sign they ain't come from that. Shoot, I'm taking it. It's Thanks. funny because back, I was just telling my wife this the other day. Ten years ago, somebody offered me 20 bands, man. I think I'm. I thought I was rich. Right, right. Good rich. Yeah. We gonna do 20 bands in two weeks, man. Facts. Thanks. Some people Thanks. in a day, slick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just talking about business wise. Yeah. yeah. Not me personally. Right. IRS. Bow bow. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, no, nah, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> nah, but for real though, so it's like you gotta understand money and these young these young kids with the talent they don't understand. They understand this, man. I was eating oodles and noodles yesterday. Dude just offered me 50 bands, but don't yeah. understand the back end when somebody's messing you up on the publisher. Right. Yeah. Thanks. So within in, in my deal, I would want, you know, to educate that. Yeah. You feel me? So it's like, you know, that's 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 why I stand on it on my part. My other business partners, they're tech savvy. Yeah. Very good. And then they also been, you know, known in the music industry as well. That's love too, man, because I mean that that to me is karma. If you are helping somebody else to make sure that they're going into a good position and not gonna get screwed over, yeah. it's gonna come back on you tenfold. Like that's good karma to me. Be like, okay, he really made sure that this artist went into a good position, didn't get screwed over. Okay, something good's gonna come your way. Most definitely. You know, I was listening to Boom Man, right? You know, I had him on my show too. And actually, I'm going to be 100 with you. I saw him on your show, and I said, yo, I got to get him on my show. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Tim, but killing it out here. I said, I got to get him. You know, I've known him for years, too. And and as I'm listening to him, I'm like, dang, man. Like, everybody got something to say. Right. Yeah. You feel me? And it depends on who tells you what. You might believe him because that's your man. Exactly. And you be like, oh, man, well, forget that, dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As I got to talk to dude, though, I understand where he's coming from. You right. feel me? Me, too. And at the end of the day, like I said earlier, everybody's not going to like you. Yeah. But I do know this, though, and this is 100% true. As an independent artist, every artist wishes to God that they had somebody to put some money behind them. Yes. Yeah. Facts. Point blank, period. They all wish they had a boom man to, exactly. to, Facts. to, to help fund their career because... That's where a lot of artists are lacking. They have the talent. They might have a, a decent support system. They just don't have the budget. Exactly. You exactly. know. And, or, or go ahead. I know I'll say, and like no matter but no like we said earlier, no matter how much money you put behind someone, 
you, that's still got necessarily going to make people resonate to you. Exactly. You know, like you yeah. could put a million dollars behind someone, but people just don't like you. They just don't like you. Yeah. So you know? switch up the game. Right. Go invest or be the coach. <laughs> yeah. For real though. Right. And that's what a lot of artists do when they get to a certain point in their career, they switch gears mm -hmm. and they become, you know, they help other artists, you know, like a, a Yo Gotti, for example. Right. Yeah. He's still making music, but he's putting he's got a, a hell of a roster. Definitely. Think about all the artists that signed to, to CMG, man. They're all winning, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I think, you know, shout out to Yo Gotti. You know, we ain't going to talk about the challenge. <laughs> Everybody's salty about that, but whatever. <laughs> but they can't be. I, you know listen, like, I mean, come it's on. It's exposure. That's the way I looked at it. I was like, it's, if it they was pick totally your stuff and play it, all these people watching you that ain't been watching you, you know? That's a fact. It's like you, know? you got to utilize those platforms, whether we're going to talk, speaking on just for a quick second, whether it was already chosen who it was or whatever, that's irrelevant. Yeah. Utilize that platform to get exposure for yourself because utilizing them hashtags and stuff. You know what I did? So... I went to the hat, you know, you can click on the hashtag and it shows you everybody that's posted. Yeah. I went through and I spent like an hour liking, liking. I got like 40 something new followers in like an hour by liking all these artists posts. Yeah. They might become a client. Facts. Yeah. Utilize it for what it's worth. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Stop bitching because you didn't win and, and, and utilize it for what it's worth. <laughs> but you but you know how I look at it too though, marketing. That's yeah. exactly right. He did a hell of a job marketing. He's, he's, he's trying to come. Nice. He's trying to do something. He's trying. I thought he's dropping another album or something like that. Yeah, yeah. you gotta do what you gotta do to. to you know, Period. To you can't be mad at that. Not at all. You know, do you yeah. utilize that tactic for when you you do an album and put an album out? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, most definitely. So, um, your podcast. Where can people check it out at? The Incredibles. Uh, on YouTube. Uh, B100 Radio. Okay. Uh, Instagram Live every Tuesday, 6 o'clock. Uh, okay, dope. B100. If there's any artists out there or business owners, entrepreneurs, whoever that's interested in coming to interview with you guys, um, how do they reach out for that? Uh, they could DM me at Badge Knows Talent, or they can go straight to uh, B100 Radio on IG. Dope, dope. DM. Word, man. Listen, I appreciate you coming through today. Oh, man, thank you for this having This was me. long overdue. Yeah. This is my dog right here, man. <laughs> we got to we gotta get back together and do, like, stuff's, I guess, kind of opening back up or whatever. Definitely we got we got to do something, do man. Do another listening party. Or... Let me tell you something. Everybody always asks me about the listening parties. That I feel like that was that was dope. I like the one yeah. we did at that, that venue. Was that yeah. was hard. So with luxury. Yes, with luxury. Yeah, that was real dope. We did one at Street Execs together. Yeah. We've yeah. been working, man. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, so yeah, is that something that you would still actively want to do? Would put some listening events together for 110%. artists? Hundred percent. Let's make it happen. I feel like I, I feel like um, I'm like a, a '90s, early 2000s type of guy, right? When it comes to the music game, yeah. yeah. The listening parties, because you got to understand, and I didn't understand what I was doing when I did them. We had a hundred, we had a whole bunch of people come out to listen to somebody that they've never heard of before. It like, was packed. Like literally. Like <laughs> it who's was the artist? It's like right. that's that, that's the crazy part. You right. feel me? And that's yeah. what I that's what I liked about it, you know. Um so hell yeah, we definitely gotta, you know, get back to doing that. Um and I would, you know, bring the bloggers out. Yeah. Bring the magazine. Some media out, and media. stuff like that. Oh man. Yeah. So it, it was dope. It was a good but to me it was more of a networking event though. Facts. Yeah. You feel me? So it's like, you know, good food, you know, drinking, chilling. Oh yeah, there so, was some good food there. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what it's all about. You gotta utilize those platforms. I tell artists all the time, like I'll ask them, if you're going to a performance at a venue like that, a club mm -hmm. or something. What do you do before you get on that stage? And I've heard so many different answers. I'm like, this is what you need to be doing. You need to work that room. Have to. Introduce yourself to every single person you can. That way, when you get on stage, they're already familiar with you. Yes. They'll be like, oh, bro came and talked to me. He was cool. I'm going to check out his performance. Most definitely. Yeah. But if you hiding in the corner all night and then you get called to the stage, you're going to be like, where has he been all night? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So well, you, know, you know, that's that's uh, when I got luxury. That's how I got luxury. Um, when, uh, you know floodgates? I don't think I, I don't think so. All right, so floodgates he throws um, shows. Okay, out here in Atlanta. Yeah. Okay. And he throws shows, and, and they're pretty dope. You know, Lennox though, right? Yes. So both of them was throwing the show. Okay. They asked me to come through, and they wanted me to check out an artist. But the artist that I noticed though was Luxury because before he did get on, he literally went through everybody. Yeah. 
And I'm going to be honest with you. In Y'all my, heard it. But in my head, though, I'm like, yo, something wrong with this dude? Like, why he keep going yeah. up, dapping people up, saying what's up? You didn't even perform yet. Jesus Christ. When he got on stage and he performed, yeah, everybody noticed him. One, because because he everybody showed love, but his music was just off the chain. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so, it, you know, hum, gotta be humble, man. man. That's another thing. A lot of people think they already made it. They be acting big-headed. Even the artists that do get on, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna say no names, but <laughs> you hot for only a minute, bro. Yeah. Facts. So, so everybody love, because when you down and you need a little bit of bread, guess what? Somebody might book you, because he was like, man, that was a humble dude when he was up. He yeah. always showed somebody love, so. Period. And, like, you're only as big as your last hit. That's it. You know what I'm saying? And then what? You know, and, and I think as an artist, it's it's kind of, t- I'm not an artist, but I would imagine it's tough to keep coming back to back oh, with bangers man. and bangers and bangers. Like, yeah. so you got to find other things to do to keep yourself relevant. 110%. Doing interviews like this. Positive stuff. Bro. Positive yeah. stuff. Not shooting people and yeah. talking back to the ops and all that. No. Beefing with people. Yeah. Yeah, nah, and that that's, that's corny to yeah, me. It's, <laughs> it's whack. <laughs> it's whack, man. Yeah. Um, so listen, there's three things that we got to do before we get up out of here. Yes, we got man. my homie Bez in the building. He and I got we got, y'all heard it. We got listening parties on the way. Yeah, we putting it out there in the universe. We claiming it. We yeah. getting back to it. Um, tell everybody. I know you said a moment ago, but tell them one more time where they can follow you on all your social media. Um, Instagram is Bez Knows Talent. Um, Facebook, same thing. Bez Knows Talent. You could also Google me. I love that word. <laughs> Best knows talent. Yeah, because he all, I trust me, you all up and down Google. Yes. I keep up with you, bro. Yeah, but I pay for that, though. I'm gonna be real with you. Pay it, for all that. And I say that and I say that on purpose because this this is the key, right? Most people and do depend- though, just no, to be. No, 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 you have to. Yeah, but, I, I do too. I pay to get on all the big blocks. Ads. You have to do it. Ads. But independent artists don't want to do it though. Because uh, that's how you get that blue check. Exactly. People got to be talking about you. Exactly. So you got to pay to get on these blog sites to have people talking about you in order to get that blue check. Exactly. Period. You know what I'm saying? Trust me, I'm working on it right now. 100% right. (laughs) Now you're right, though. I, I, man, listen, if Coca-Cola got to do it, they're a billion-dollar industry, right? Facts. How many times do we see a Coca-Cola commercial? Facts. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, just like an artist <clears throat> who's, uh, we spoke on Future or Gucci, mm-hmm. they are still putting money into radio campaigns. Most and definitely. Like, they're not just getting all that for free. Not at all. It'll never stop. Um, anybody you want to shout out to? Uh, my wife. My rock. Love her to death. She's my rock. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, my daughter. My wife. Uh, who else? All the people that uh, my team. He got a hottie for a wife too now. Oh, thank you, man. She beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I trapped her when he was 18. <laughs> I just said now it's too late. Now you can't leave me. I trapped the shit out of her. <laughs> so you're going to have this one. <laughs> this mine. <laughs> um, but, uh, and my mother, man. Yeah. Shout out to Mom Dukes. <sighs> yes, yes, yes. Most definitely. Uh, last but not least, man, what do we got to do, though? <laughs> Look, before we even go there, you know what I'm saying? I've been over here waiting because I got one oh, question. Oh, you go ahead. One question before we wrap it up. Yep. When we talk marketing budget, mm-hmm. what's a, I guess, what, what's a good number for a budget for a marketing independent artist? Hmm. Yeah, everybody usually gets scared when they talk about budget. <laughs> everybody. Um, <clears throat> all right, so how I usually break it down is it's about being consistent. Yeah. See, because usually when you be like, yo, what's your budget? Uh, 20000 and that means you're going to give me 20 bands. No, nah, it doesn't work like that. Not, not at least where I work at. Yeah. It basically, we'll have a marketing plan, and a marketing plan might cost 20 bands, but it might, it might take eight months to get to where we need to get to. So the name of the game is about being consistent monthly. Yeah. You got to think about it. Our age group is not the people who are buying the music's age group. Right. Yeah. And their minds are like this, quick, fast. Facts. I got to, I'm going to be real with you. I'm on social media so daggone much, man. I got to see somebody eight, nine times before I be like, Yo, who the hell is this? No, nah, for real. You yeah. feel me? So, yeah. that, so that's, that's the eight, nine months though. Because it's like, dang, dude been grinding. I seen him. Feel me? The first month, you know, I heard about him a little bit. The second month, he's in a little bit of blogs. That's cool. Third month, dude going on tour. Fourth month, he got a blue check. Fifth month, he's on World Star. Yo, who is this dude? Yeah. yeah. So it's a build up nowadays. You know what I'm saying? So as far as a budget, I would say a healthy budget 
to at least get some real good stuff done anywhere between 7500 and 10000 at the lowest. Yeah. But that's a six-month campaign, though. So, yeah. really, that's 2000 or $1,500 a month. Okay. But a healthy, healthy budget to, like, really, like, go to a label and shock them anywhere from twenty five to 30000 Right. Right. No. Six months. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. I remember Dolph even said that it takes a quarter million dollars to really break a record. Oh, to, no. That's radio. Like, yeah. for radio yeah. and that's, stuff. That's across the nation. Yes. Yeah. 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 That, See, that makes sense because it's like, you know, you hear people talk budget and they always be like, what's your budget? And you be like, you don't understand the budget. You be wondering if this a one time thing I'm going to pay oh, yeah, for no, no, this no, time. No, 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 no. It's just, you know, how much how much money do you have over this period of time to knock out these things that we have lined up for Got you? you. That Thanks. makes sense. You know, we so, just, it's a checklist. Sitting down with someone like yourself who who puts a marketing plan together for yes. them can better estimate, okay, you're going to need at least 1500 a month Most for definitely. the next six months or whatever the, the number may be. Most definitely. And one thing that I love um, about our services is <clears throat> you don't know how many times independent artists have came and sat in front of me and said, man, they put 50000 80000 you know, the street dudes, 150000 Right. And I Google yeah. you, I don't see nothing. Right. Yeah. So Period. It's like, <clears throat> or I go to your Spotify, you got your mom, your grandma, and your aunt listening to your music. <laughs> for listeners, you feel me? So at the end of the day, um, you know, it's, it's real important that um, you understand the process. And you also, for me, when you give me $2,000 and I say you want to be on the source, you want to be on the source. You know where your money went. So that's a lot of problems right. that a lot of people have. It's like, man, I gave this dude money, man, but I don't see nothing. Right. You, know I do? you see everything that I put the money into. Facts. Yeah, facts. Yes, and, and those those sites are a big part of it. You know, getting on the source and all hip hop and et cetera. Most like definitely. Because that that's gonna stick. It's gonna be there that's forever. Your SEOs right there. That's your you SEOs. That. People, like you said, always talking about Google me. Okay, and then what? What are we gonna see? You Google Bez, Bez knows talent, you're gonna see all kinds of articles and stuff behind them because yeah. you invested in Most definitely. your marketing. And it's no definitely. different than an artist. That's a great question, though, thanks, thanks. because a lot of artists will ask that. They're like, well, how much do I need? I mean, it really just depends on what they're trying to do, really. It also depends on where you're at. In your yeah. Right, right. Yeah. You feel me? Right. Absolutely. They're just starting out. You know, and then the thing is, like, some of them might not have 1500 a month. Well, this is what you need to do then. You need to figure out after your bills are paid, how much extra do you have? And if you got to cut some stuff out or go get a part-time job to, to stack some money, wait until you get two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 built up and then think about putting it together. You know, coming with $100 a month, ain't gonna that's not going to do nothing for you. Not at all. Not at all. Listen, man, I, and I don't want to sound like an asshole. Just, just uh, but, hey, say it because they need it real. <laughs> I'll keep it real, though. When, when I first got my office, it's in Buckhead on the 18th floor. I have plaques all in my office, and there's nothing but white people in my building. Yeah. Anybody, and it's 21 floors. So anybody who walks in <laughs> that's a rapper, they already know they're going to see Bez. Yeah. When those <laughs> people, by the time they get on that elevator, though, they like, damn. They listen to the elevator music. Oh, we got some good elevator music. <laughs> it's all perception. It's right. It's real. I got to bait you in. That's right. When you walk in my office, you see all these plaques. They platinum plaques, and my name is on them. Right. Yeah. By the time you sit down, you already know you paying, brother. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I don't want to hear no 200 300 because this ain't no two or $300 office, brother. Yeah. You got to understand the business. <laughs> yeah. And there's no disrespect. And no. if you don't have it, then I might not be for you. That's right. Thanks. You know, I, I, I really, in the last three years, I try to mimic myself after Bentley. Yeah. Bentley, you don't see no commercials for it, do you? No. So this ain't for everybody. Yeah. You did. So it's like, <clears throat> and no offense, you know, I can help everybody. And of I really course. can, but I don't have the time f- for that. I, I can't yes. help everybody. You you <laughs> will you will wear yourself thin trying oh, to man. do that. Like, you will stress yourself out. There's just oh, some man. people that you cannot Touch. take on as a client, and that's Touch. just what it is. Exactly. It ain't for everybody. No. Like, I even, I get, I turn people away from just doing this because they'll be like, well, can I pay you a little bit this week? I said, if you can't pay it all, nah, then, like, I'm good. I good. don't even charge that much. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They want to make, like, deposits and down payments, and I'm just like, then, you know, mm. this isn't for you. That's it. This music business isn't for you. And, and, it's, <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> You yeah. know, this ain't for everybody. It is what it is. Right. These holes for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, well, you, gotta, look, you gotta pay what you want, you know. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> uh, what's okay. the last thing we got to do, dog? Man, you already know what time it is. We on the industry's most wanted podcast, and uh, we got to know why you the industry's most wanted. Why am I the industry most wanted? Because uh, God put me here. Thanks. Period. That's it. Period. Was that, a good, was that a good one? When my mother yeah, see that, she would be like, that's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, though, I, I, I'm going to be honest, though, because uh, God put me here. He, he, man, listen, man. It's, it's, put it like this. I went to college. My college professor said, you need to go get a good job or a good career. Um, The same CEOs that walk in and out of my building, I get to do the same thing. That's right. Yeah. That's a blessing. And Thanks. you're doing it for yourself. There you go. That's the biggest blessing right there is to be able to wake up every day. That's why I wanted to know how your day flowed because to wake up and, and be able to create your own day every day yeah. is like the biggest blessing ever. Man, listen, I got a driver and a security. And I remember I was, he's been with me for a long time. I used to hire him for my clients, but now I, I hire him for myself. You bossed up. And, and, <laughs> and I complained one day I was getting into a truck. And I, I was complaining. Man pulled over and he said, bro, what the hell you complaining about? I said, man, I'm just tired, man. Sitting up here, listening to all these artists. And he was like, okay. He was like, then we used to uh, pray for this. So I, we was in South by Southwest. He was like, you was complaining then. Like, dang, man, how do you, how, how so-and-so get to go over here and get paid 1500 And, you know, I was marketing for him. Yeah. And, and get paid 1500 for 10 minutes and then just get off and just chill with a female. I wish I could do that. Right. Six years later, now you complaining? Stop playing with me, man. Right. And I was like, dang, nah, it's a blessing. Everything that I asked God for, he done gave me, man. Yes, and that's yeah. good. You got to have someone around mm -hmm. you that's going to keep you in well, check like that. Yeah, definitely. 110%. Bigger does that for me all the time, like, yeah. you know, and I'm so thankful for him because he'll call me sometimes and he will might see something I post or whatever. He'll be like, no, nah, that's not it. Yeah. Now I'm mindful of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not yeah. reckless anymore. <laughs> I, 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 yes, my wife and my, my business partner tech is like that for me. Because I swear <laughs> I'll post something like, everybody. But yeah. <laughs> Right, because sometimes we be in our feelings yeah, and we emotional. just yeah, yeah, yeah. we just want to put it out there. You know what I'm saying? But really, and and that goes with what I've been saying a lot lately. Instagram and social media period is very much smoke and mirrors. Yeah, most definitely. Most people only put the good stuff out there. They yep. make their lives look like it's glorious and everybody wants it. But mm -hmm. really, once they get off the gram, like they're miserable. Yeah, they're yeah. doing that to make it. They put this facade on. Yeah, take so, it till you make it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And that's what it is, man. Um, well, listen, once again, give me some love. Boom. This is my dog. Shout out Biz in the building, man. Anything else you got before we get up out of here? Oh, no, nah, man. It's been great. We appreciate you. Doe, you got anything hey, else? Man, I ain't got nothing else. You know what I'm saying? It was great. You know what I'm saying? Learned a lot. Needed to hear a lot. Yeah. You, know? you got any questions over that. there? There you go. That's what I'm talking about. See, this was this was this was very much well time spent. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much. Man, we out of here, y'all. It is the industry's most wanted. You dig? Yeah.